So if you haven't already noticed, craft beer is booming right now. In 2012, there were only 2,500 breweries, and today there's over 6,000 breweries in the United States today. Uh, this is great for me because I absolutely love craft beer, but this is not so great for the breweries who have been enjoying these highly uh, profitable distribution channels. They're now getting very competitive and overcrowded. So the breweries are having to heavily invest in their taproom experiences, but outside the point of sale, there really isn't uh, that much software out there to help them build these better experiences with customers. Uh, and that's why my co-founder Travis and I got together and we developed the Brew Fund to create uh, better customer loyalty, increased customer loyalty uh, through continuous engagement during and after the taproom visit. And so we do this in a, uh, three ways. <clears throat> we have our gift giving app where you can go out right now and select a friend, select a brewery, and you can buy a friend a pint, flight, even a growler and a t-shirt. A friend gets a message that says, you've got beer, and they walk into the brewery, show their phone, and they get a free pint. Now this also further drives revenue because, come on, let's be honest, who goes to a brewery and only has one pint? It just doesn't happen. Uh, we also have uh, real-time digital displays, and these are, uh, can act just as a simple menu, but they can also be configured to be an event board, an advertising board. They can even display a list of all the people that have been given gifts at your brewery, encourage other people to do so as well. And so um, this is not just a display, it's a display that takes your, or, <laughs> it's a display that earns a venue additional revenue. And last is our managed loyalty program. And so mug clubs and brewery benefit clubs are very profitable for venues. However, they're very difficult to manage sometimes, so is, <clears throat> and they, uh, uh, a lot of people just forget to come in and use their benefits. And so we provide a custom mobile app uh, as well as a physical card if the venue wants it. Uh, and we provide all the billing support. Uh, we handle all the you know, tracking of redemption and rewards. Uh, and we also create this whole new level of communication between the venue and their most loyal customers. And they were able to monetize both the venue as well as their customers uh, for our own benefit. Uh, with our gift giving uh, app, we take a transaction fee on every single item that is sold right now. And it's all done on the buyer side, so it doesn't cost the venue anything yet. On our digital screens, we have a subscription-based revenue that is configured based on how complex their setup is. And last, on our uh, loyalty program, we charge $5 per member per month. Uh, the venue gets to build that into their cost of the user, and the average venue has 100 users on their loyalty program. Now, Craft Beer is a $23 billion market, but we're initially focused on southeastern breweries and tap rooms. Uh, from there, we want to build out and expand to uh, the uh, craft beer centric cities across the nation and hopefully from there we'll expand out and become a national brand. Uh, wine and spirits are also very interesting markets for us because they have a lot of the same issues uh, and we think the Brew Fund can really help solve those. So we're planning on rebranding the Brew Fund to fit those markets cultures and then we're going to release in, into those markets here in the next couple years. Now there are competitors on each piece of our platform, however we feel our biggest competitive advantage is that we provide uh, multiple ways for a venue to uh, engage and uh, monetize their customers through an interconnected ecosystem. We're also very excited about our horizontal competitors because they uh, provide possibly the fastest path for an exit in three to five years, and I'd love to share more of that with you when we have a little more time. Uh, currently, the Brew Fund is in 36 venues across five states. Uh, we've tripled our user growth in just under 10 months, and uh, we're continuing to grow very fast every day. But to get where we want to go and where we want to be, we need to really uh, just you know, exponentially grow our sales capacity. Uh, right now we're knocking on doors, going to festivals and events, and reaching out on social media. There's only so much a small team can do. Uh, speaking of the small team, my co-founder Travis and I are both Purdue University graduates. We've been working together uh, for seven years as consultants, and we've been um, helping other startups build their MVPs and grow them, all the way to working with the Department of Veteran Affairs uh, to visualize their massive data. And so, and really as a consultant, we're also spending all this time finding clients, building, creating partnerships, and we brought that business experience to the Brew Fund as well. And so we're currently seeking $500,000, and really the focus of this is to grow our sales. We need to add three new full-time salespeople. Uh, we also want to add one, one other software person initially, and it's uh, going to help us really you know, achieve and go after new opportunities that come our way. And the very last thing I'll say is that if you download our mobile application, our gift-giving app, it's called BrewFund, and just open it up, create an account, or sign in if you have one, we're going to give out five free beers, or five free ginger beers to Ginger's Revenge today. We've got to do it before, before this is over. So. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hey, David. Hey. Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Can you, it's the, I think the, the discipline of getting through the slides and everything else, there's a sure. few gaps that, that mm -hmm. I had I wanted to go back to. Um, maybe just start with the user experience on both sides of your market. Sure. Uh, again, you, you from the, you know, from the, the consumer side, mm -hmm. 
going into a tap room and, and how brew fund is going to work and then also from the from the brewery's perspective just kind of tell me the story of both of those sure absolutely and I, five minutes is very fast to do that and uh Really, I'm just kind of painting a picture. Uh, if I buy a friend a beer, which I've done many times, uh, they you know, receive this message that says, you've got beer, and they can claim that beer, and they create an account. So every time somebody gets a gift, we also get another user. Um, so that's helping us grow very quickly. Once they get that gift, they actually have to walk into the venue and show their phone, still have to show their ID, and that's you know, still very important, and then they receive their gift. And so it's kind of a mechanism to bring people into the brewery and get them engaged. But once they're there on the venue side, uh, you know, there are a lot of venues are using chalkboards or they have, you know, variety of means for doing digital menu or doing static menus. And we found from our partners that that's a lot of time sink and not everybody can really just the usual managers and operators change that. And we've enabled through real time displays that the staff can actually go through using the tablet they use for the point of sale typically to update their menus, redeem rewards, redeem loyalty. And so their user experience is really interacting with their environment and basically democratizing that so it's the staff as well as uh, the owners and operators. And the beauty of that is that we have you know, automatic styling. So if a you know, staff member is you know, in a hurry and they do something real quick, it's still gonna look great, even if it's not right. So does that answer your question? I think so. Right. It, it uh, definitely sheds more light on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so it, can you go back to your revenue model slide? Sure. So when I buy, when I buy my buddy a beer through, through ah, sorry. Brew Fund, um, you get a dollar. Yeah, right now, transaction fees okay, so I, you every get, single item. So I, I, I buy a beer and you get a dollar off of that, which is you know, <coughs> the same as like the parking apps and everything else. So there's that <coughs> transaction fee. Um, the 50 to 250 a month, that's what the brewery pays? Yes, that's on the venue side based on how many screens and what type of uses they want to use for it. And 50 the, is the most common. Gotcha, and then the $5 is what <coughs> I would pay just to have the subscription. Uh, no, that's actually the cost that's built into a sub subscription fee. Typically, these plans run uh, 20 to $25 a month. And so uh, mug clubs can be different as well, but you get a variety of benefits, like larger pours, uh, special access to you know, first beers, uh, dinners with different uh, brewers and things like that. Okay. So. All right, that's confusing. Um, sure. So I would, I, my, my big recommendation is make mm -hmm. that really, really simple to understand. Absolutely. And maybe even walking through, like, hey, let me show you these two kind of pathways to uh, sure. how we make money. I mean, here's one, here's the other, here's from the consumer, here's from the, you know, the B2B play. Um, the, similarly, the, the competition, really understanding, because this is, you know, the, the customer loyalty is a big problem to solve. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I like how you started out and, and you know, kind of established that the problem, you know, it's kind of a good news, bad news situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, the bad news is that the more breweries that are coming into the market is really making for a lot of noise. How do you cut through that noise sure. and build loyalty, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is one way to do it. The catch is there's a lot of folks that are trying to attack this problem. Mm -hmm. So how are you specifically differentiated? This is an actual question. How are you guys, like what is your unfair advantage uh, that you have now or that you're building that, um, that the other competitors in the space don't have and it would be hard for them to do and be more advantageous to partner with you or buy you. Sure, absolutely. And I, um, especially on the customer loyalty side, it is very, comp or very uh, uh, packed full of competitors. And really our biggest competitive advantage is it's not just one element. Typically it's a loyalty program um, or they have the you know, screens. They're not really seeing that as an opportunity for an investment. And so really I think our piece is that it's an entire platform that's almost an off shelf solution you bring in that you can interact very easily. And then we're able to uh, monetize the consumer outside of the tap room, engage them, talk with them, as well as bring them in. We can also engage them in the tap room with their displays, uh, rewarding, and makes it very easy on the consumer, but still, doesn't matter where they are, they are now part of this platform. And then even your consumers, or your most loyal customers that are paying you $20 a month, they can also share the experience of your venue through digital gifting. And so, so far to our knowledge, we have not seen anybody that's brought all of that together. And so I think we're hitting the Instead of just being you know, simple one-off little loyalty programs, it's more of building in an ecosystem. I think uh, to, to that point, what, what's really interesting is I, I think about buying beers for people and it's usually synchronous and not asynchronous. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm sure. not sitting there sort of thinking about it. And mm -hmm. I always think about activation energy for me to download something mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. of sale or at that, that location. And uh, what, what would it take to put um, payment software or like a debit balance that I'm sort of just drawing down on every time that I'm going to the bar because I always just think like why do I have to pull off the credit why do I have to do any of this sure. stuff anymore 
And what, is it, what does it take to, to build that into this? And sort of what's your thought then around that? Um, because then you sort of have the entire ecosystem and own that. Absolutely, we've uh, been exploring that model uh, that between that and discounting. And so it's not really a technical challenge, it's actually just working on the logistics with the venue itself. Um, and so one of the other things that we're working on right now is in actually integrating with the different most popular point of sales, uh, Clover, uh, Square, then um, Rebel, are kind of the top three that are being used by breweries right now. And so it's more of just a, having the capacity to do it and move quicker, quickly to actually build those new types of features in. Uh, we've slowed down with just these types of three just to get them very polished and out the door and start bringing in the revenue. Um, but those are exactly the types of things we want to explore. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then the gift card seems to be, or the gift giving is mm -hmm. your mouse trap. Uh, yes, is absolutely. That, is that absolutely. essentially how you mm -hmm. view that? Um, absolutely. And that, okay. we've actually launched that way ahead of time. Um, and that's let us get into the you know, 36 venues and we've been able to very quickly up convert about 10% into our beta paying or paying beta customers. And so we think that strategy has been successful. You know, get them in, build strong relationships with them, help them earn additional revenue, and then we can upsell them in different aspects. Gotcha. And I think it, it might be useful too to see what it looks like if I'm at the register or as I'm walking in, mm -hmm. sort of what your signage is, how it's differentiated, um, and how I'm going to know to download your sure. funds as there's a busy bartender or brew tender or whatever behind the, the bar. Um, because that'll be really important mm -hmm. in terms of messaging, and I think it will also bring me into the narrative more to like see and put me into that brewery and, and sure. see that. So, Absolutely, yeah. thank you. Great advice. Okay. Hello, David. Uh, How's it going? We actually had a chance to meet uh, Million Cups a couple of weeks ago, Absolutely. and uh, I wasn't aware that I was going to be a judge at that point sure. in time, so <laughs> I, I kind of probed David quite a bit about uh, <laughs> his business and went home to the office and uh, analyzed his website, so mm -hmm. have a little more knowledge perhaps than sure. uh, the, the quick view here. But one thing I was interested in, and I, I was trying to look at it from a customer acquisition mm -hmm. standpoint. Now, is your primary vehicle at point of sale where they're actually drinking the beer as opposed to the app store? Or um, yeah, Absolutely. I, I, we can we get our own customers, uh, you know, it cost us between uh, three to four dollars to acquire two, or, yeah, to acquire a single customer. Yeah. Um, but really, uh, the best growth we can possibly have is actually not just at the point of sale, but actually in the venue itself. And mm -hmm. so we provide some market materials, table tents, uh, some flyers and posters. We're constantly rolling around to kind of give it out different holidays, like upcoming Valentine's Day. We're going to be running around and distributing things, and so that gets the word out. And then also we've uh, we only have limited capacity, so we're able to do it you know, slowly, but we're working with different uh, breweries and their marketing teams, if they have them, or even just working with the owners to push things out on social media and reach out people. And that's probably 10 times more effective than us going out and selling through App Store or anything else. And one last point on that is we actually don't require the App Store. If you don't have a smart, smartphone or you know, probably something that should be mentioned up there, it also works just completely on the web. Mm -hmm. So if you hate downloading an app, you can still have beer. And we're actually pre-selling the beer. And so even if you don't have an app and you walk in the door, you can still redeem your gifts just by walking in and showing your ID. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was concerned because I was thinking the App Store was uh, your, your main driver oh, no. and there's <laughs> over uh, 2 million apps out there exactly. these yeah. days, exactly. so it's very hard. I see a lot of apps and it's uh, really hard to say, mm -hmm. how are you going to get somebody to download that app? So I'm glad Absolutely. to see, but you, in scaling your business, because right now it's it's I assume pretty much a one-to-one -one kind of business. How, how do you see being able to expand beyond uh, uh, the local market, making it really a national standpoint if you're sure. really looking at you know, table cards and, Absolutely. and whatnot as your vehicle? And really our model so far seems to be working. Uh, we're still always evaluating it, trying to make it better, but uh, the mousetrap kind of where we give out, do the digital gifting has attracted quite a few people. We now have somebody in Philly and in Indianapolis and those venues are starting to reach out to us. Oh, and it's that ability for them to pre-sell their beer and generate revenue. And then we also have these other opportunities that we feel are going to grow very quickly as well. And so it's, um, I know there's additional ways for us to expand and grow that. So we're looking for expertise, people in marketing and sales to help us do that. Um, and also just reaching out and getting the word out to more people at Great American Beer Fest, uh, Beer Expo, and all these huge events, as well as all the festivals, not just here, but in the surrounding area. And craft beer is a very tight community. So if you do well and you, talk, and you make them happy, they talk very well. So we're trying to reward that too. Okay, just, just one last thing. One sure. company I'm invested in is uh, Underground Cellar, which deals with wine, uh, not mm -hmm. necessarily gifting, but what they do is somebody orders a, a bottle of wine, they then receive a, a, a 
kind of a surprise bottle of wine, if you oh, will, sure. that they're able to sample things. Mm -hmm. Their growth has been just uh, spectacular. You might look at their sure. website and understand uh, what their model is, see if you can borrow some of those thoughts for the beer category, because uh, it's it's a little different in that it's not gifting. Sure. It's a subscription model. Absolutely. But uh, they sometimes when you see a winner, it's not bad sure. to... <laughs> to Always. see what they're doing. Always. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you for Thanks. that. Thanks. And thank you for your feedback, guys. Thank, thank you. you.